these are two sisters, daughters of the most perfect woman and man ever created. Their names are Rukaya and Um Kudum, and they are the daughters of Khadijah and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Join Sunnah followers every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern as we share stories, stories of the heroines of Islam. Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. A welcome to our series entitled The Heroines of Islam. The Heroines of Islam. And this has become one of the most provocative series that I have ta ever taught. Because the way that I'm teaching about these female companions is unlike how many others are teaching or have taught. Because what I'm doing is not only uh, engaging or indulging in their life and sharing them with you, but also trying to use their life example as a means of you and I being able to handle our trials in life as well. And that's the way it should be. Why? Because these women were not just heroines of Islam. They are our mentors of Islam. They are our role models of Islam. You know, one of the things that I tell uh, the new converts, the new uh, sisters when they convert to Islam is, uh, of course, you have to focus on uh, Aqidah, learning what the true belief system of, of the Muslim is. And then you have to work on changing your character to that which is pleasing to Allah. And a lot of the sisters say, well, how should the Muslim woman's character be? It should be as those female companions were. Your character should be as Aisha's was, as Hafsa's was, as these females were, as Rukaya, Zainab, ready Allah, who all of these women, you know, they were the examples for us, the role models for us, how to be a good wife, how to be a good mother, a good daughter, how to strive in the way of Allah how to balance your obligations to Allah and your obligations to your husband and your obligations to your children and to your family and your community. These women were the epitome of that. And I started this series off by giving you the stories of the prophet's wives. And so now what we're doing is embarking upon the journey of his daughters. I gave you the story of Fatima, radiallahu anha, who was the four, fourth most perfect woman ever created. And then I last week, I gave you the story of her older sister, Zainab, radiallahu anha, and hers was a story of sacrifice. Hers was a story of how even when uh, we're put to test with our husbands, we don't choose them over Allah either. Well, today I'm going to do the second oldest daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And her name was Rukaya. And hers is also a story of sacrifice. It's also a story of beautiful love too. Because she was the one who first married Uthman, ready Allahu on her. So let's open up the PowerPoint and let's begin this beautiful journey into the life of Rukaya, ready Allahu anha, who was the second oldest daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But to begin this discussion, what I am going to do to begin this discussion, we have to include her with her sister uh, Um Khatoum, who was uh, born right after her because they, their journey, their struggle, their struggles were entwined. And the reason being because first of all, they were just a year apart in age, 
and they were so much alike. And secondly, they were two sisters who were married to two brothers. So we're gonna begin the tale by first of all, speaking about them both. And let's put the PowerPoint uh, up on the screen. And again, today I'm gonna start with Rukaya, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she was the second oldest, okay? When Allah sent down the verse of the Quran, which says in the interpretation of the meaning, warn your tribe and your close relatives. This was a verse of the Quran that was sent down, one of the first verses sent to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he received the call to prophethood. Here in this verse, Allah commanded him, you know, charity begins at home with your family, with you. So before you call anyone to Islam, start with your family and your tribe. So what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did was went out and climbed the mountain known as As Asafa. And when he reached the top, he yelled out, so all the people can hear, he said, why, Sabaha? And the people said, who is that? And they became worried because this was the call that uh, the Arabs would make if they saw an enemy approaching or something. So the people ran from out of their homes, you know, ready, uh, wondering who was it that was getting ready to attack them. And they stood underneath the mountain they gathered around the prophet and, they, and he said to them, do you see that if I were to tell you that an army was approaching from the other side of the mountain, would you believe me? And they said, yes, we would believe you because you've never told us a lie. He said, then if you would believe me if I told you that, why won't you believe me now? He said, I am a warner sent to you by a law to remind you of the coming of a severe punishment. And then Abu Lahab, who was his uncle and who was also one of the leaders of the tribe, he said, may you perish Muhammad. You called us away from our business just for this. And then he walked away. Okay, so this was right in the beginning when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the call uh, to prophethood. Okay, he was on his mission of trying to convince the Quraysh that he was a prophet, that he was a messenger sent by Allah to call them back to the truth. But when Abu Lahab made that statement, that's when Allah sent down another verse saying, perish the hands of Abu Lahab. You perish. His money and his children will not help him. He will be burnt in a fire of blazing flames and his wife too. She will carry the wood on her back and in her neck is a twisted rope of a date palm. So here Allah defended the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Abu Lahab called himself cursing him, okay? And this marked the beginning. The reason why, the reason why I began the story of Rukaya with this is because this marked the beginning of the fit, fitna or the hardship and struggle that Rukaya would face. So when Allah sent down that verse of the Quran and the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared it, there was a poet amongst the Arabs, okay? And he wrote a poem about Abu Lahab's wife. He said, what is this rope that all the people see in the middle of hell, which will not be hidden from anyone? All other ropes in this world are made of animal fur, 
but the rope of Abu Lahab's wife will be made of palm fiber, Subhana Allah. And when Abu Lahab's wife, her name was Um Jamil, when she heard this poetry about her and she heard those verses of the Quran revealed about her, she became angry. So she went to go meet, to see the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was sitting near the Kaaba with Abu Bakr and she picked up a rock and she was gonna confront him. But when she went to confront him, he was not there. All she could see was Abu Bakr. So she said, Abu Bakr, where's your friend? She said, I was told that he verbally attacked me with his poetry. She said, by Allah, if I find him, I will hit him in his mouth with this rock. She said, because I too am a poet. Now remember guys, uh, when the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the revelation, the Quraysh began to slander him. They accused him of being crazy. They accused him of being a poet. They accused him of being a, 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 a magician. They didn't want to accept that these were the words of Allah, okay? They believed in Allah, but they did not believe that Allah was the only one worthy of worship. So they worshiped idols alongside with him, okay? So, Um Jamil, she was a poet. So she said, he wants to compose a poetry about me. She said, I got a poem for him. And this is what she said. She said, we disobey, we disobey Mudamam. And this is the, the, an Arabic word that means the opposite of Muhammad. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means the one who is praised. Well, this word means the one who is reprimanded. So she said, we disobey the one who is reprimanded and we reject his affairs and we renounce his so-called religion. And then she walked away thinking she had done something, but she didn't realize that it was she who was being reprimanded through the verses of Allah. And when she walked away, Abu Bakr looked at the prophet because the prophet was sitting right there the whole time. And he said, oh, prophet of Allah, do you think she saw you? Because she didn't talk to you. She talked to me. The prophet said she was not able to see me because Allah blinded her eyes from seeing me. So when she walked upon uh, up to hit the prophet, the prophet, Allah made him invisible to her, okay, to protect him. So she didn't see that he was still sitting there the whole time, which was one of the miracles of Allah that Abu Bakr witnessed. And so this is when all the drama began for the prophet's daughters. Two of them who were married to Abu Lahab's sons and Um Jamil's sons. And that was Rukaya, radiallahu anha, and Um Kutum. They were the two uh, older daughters uh, uh, of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were like maybe a year apart in age. Rukaya was born after Zainab. And Um Katun was born right after Rukaya. And they grew up together. They were so close that, and they looked so much alike that the people thought they were twins. You guys know how Norto and Aisha look like twins and because they're just a year apart. Well, that's how Rukaya and Um Katun were. They looked identical. And they were very, very close. And their closeness increased when Zainab, their older sister, had gotten married and moved away, okay? And right before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, received uh, the call to prophethood, he had just married 
those two daughters of his to the two sons of Abu Lahab. Okay? Subhana Allah. Abu Talib tells us about how uh, these two were married. Abu Talib came to the prophet one day and said, we come seeking the hands of Rukiah and Um Kutum in marriage. We hope that you will not make their marriage difficult to your cousin Utba and Uteba. Both of them were the sons of Abu Lahab and his wife, Um Jamil. And um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was approached with this marriage proposal for his two daughters, he asked for some time so he could speak to his wife about it. So he went to his wife, Khadijah, ready Allahu Anha, and he discussed the marriage proposal with her and with the two girls. And he decided that he would take their advice. And as, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was speaking, Khadijah remained silent. And the reason why she remained silent was because she knew that Um Jamil, who was the wife of Abu Lahab and the mother of the two men that wanted to marry her daughters, was a hard-hearted woman, was an evil woman. And she knew that if she didn't like Rukaya and her sister Um Khatoum, she could make their life miserable. But on the other hand, Khadija was silent too because she didn't, it was the culture of the Arabs back then, you know, to not, uh, 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 to keep the ties of kinship strong. And she did not want to break her husband's tie of kinship with his family. So she let the prophet decide and she just prayed for the best. And again, this is right before he received a call to prophethood. So Rukiah and her sister Um Kutum were married to the two sons of Abu Lahab immediately. The marriage contract took place in an atmosphere mixed with anxiety. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his daughters away in marriage and prayed for their blessings. And that night, as they celebrated the wedding, a light gleamed and illuminated the city and removed Mecca of its darkness. And that was the beginning of the call to prophethood to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commissioned as a prophet, that's when his wife Khadijah thought of her daughters and began to panic because she knew how evil Um, um Jamil was. And she knew that she would mistreat her daughters knowing that their father was professing to be a prophet. And Khadijah, ready Allahu Anha, was correct. Because as soon as the Prophet Muhammad announced who he was to the Quraysh, the Quraysh had a meeting and they began to conspire as to how to deal with the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of them suggested, you know, you just accepted two of his daughters and married them to two of the sons of, of uh, two of the great chief's sons. Why don't we send them back to him? And that's gonna be disgraceful for him. And he'll have to figure out how to take care of them. And that'll keep him from preaching about his prophethood. So Rukiah and her sister were returned back to their father's home in humiliation and distress, and they had just gotten married. So you can imagine how humiliating that was. And after that, Abu Lahab and his wife began to harass the Muslims and torture the Muslims. And Abu Lahab kept incessantly attacking the prophet at every chance he could. He would call the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam names 
and not he no longer cared about their blood ties. And this was because he was an evil man. And so this went on for a long time, okay? And then finally, one day, the prophet announced to his wife, Khadijah, he said, oh, Khadijah, the time for sleep is over. The vicious attack against him and his companions had intensified, especially for the people that were weak. And that's when Rukiah and her sister began feeling a great change in their father's house because their father had become the main target for persecution and torment. And even they were, were harassed. They were mocked and made fun of because they had been divorced. And that was a bad thing back then. Back in those days before Islam, uh, for a woman to be divorced, to be married and, and sent back, that was disgraceful. But despite the people harassing them and teasing them, Rukiah and her sister remained strong and they stood with their parents hoping for a reward from Allah. And it wasn't that long after that, that Allah sent down the suggestion to the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Rukiah marry one of the dearest companions, and that was Uthman, ready Allahu Anha. Now, Uthman, for those of you who don't know, he was very, very handsome, extremely handsome. And not only was Uthman handsome, he was young, he had never been with a woman before, he was a virgin man, he never drank, he never gambled, he was a good guy. Plus, he was a multi-millionaire. He came from a noble clan of the Quraysh, and he was very wealthy. He was a multi-millionaire. Every woman and had their eye on him. But it was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's daughter, Rukiah, who he ended up marrying. And this was a blessing in and of itself, okay? Because not only was Rukiah now married to a man that was handsome and good and rich, but also a man that could protect her and give her the happiness that she was not able to experience being married to her first husband because of they, she had married and as quickly as she was married, she was sent back, okay? And to show how the women knew that Uthman was a good catch, the Quraysh had a lullaby that they used to sing to their children. The women used to sing to their daughters, by Allah, I love you, just as the Quraysh love Uthman. That's how much of a good catch he was. But after he married uh, Rukiah, the, 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 the lullaby changed to the best two people to, who ever met each other were Rukiah and Uthman. And they were the perfect match. Rukiah was extremely beautiful, whereas Zainab looked like Khadijah, who was beautiful. Rukiah and Um Kuthum resembled their father. And they say that both girls were extremely beautiful. And Uthman was so handsome. So when he and Rukiah married, it was the perfect match. The per it was like soulmates. They were such a beautiful couple that the people used to just stare at them as they walked. And by the way, this was before uh, the, 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 the laws of hijab came down, you know? So, uh, whenever Uthman and Rukiah would walk down the street together, the people would just look because she was beautiful and he was so handsome. It was a beautiful relationship and, uh, Rukiah loved him. And that's probably why, and by the way, this picture here, by the way, guys, I removed this picture 
But the reason why this picture is here is because it's auto-generated by this um, program that's being used. You type in the word and it brings out Arabic. This is what this picture brought up. Okay. But, um, and I replaced this picture uh, with a, a, a different one. I had to go in there, but I didn't do, I forgot to do the PowerPoint, but I replaced the other pictures with a better. That's a handsome man, but I don't like that picture, that woman. So anyway, but they were such beautiful, a beautiful couple that whenever they would walk the street together, the people would look at them. You know, they would look at them. And we have a hadith, whereas Azubair, this is an authentic hadith, Azubair tells us that one day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a gift to Uthman and Rukiah, and he sent, gave it to a man to take to them. And he was waiting for the man to come back to tell him if they liked the gift. But the man came back late. So the prophet said, I know why you were late. He said, shall I tell you why, what took you so long? He said, you stood there admiring the beauty of Uthman and Rukai, and you couldn't stop looking at how beautiful they were. That's why you're late getting here. And the man said, yes, this was true. And this was before Allah sent down the verses of hijab, okay? So uh, Rukaya was extremely beautiful, okay? And Uthman, extremely handsome. And they were that perfect couple that whenever they walked together, people just looked. And you know, you have some people like that when you're missing, maybe it's you and your husband. You and your husband look so well together that when you're all out in public, people just stare, you know? So it was one of those type of things. That's how beautiful uh, a couple they were. And when the courageous persecution against the Muslims intensified, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received the command from Allah to allow some of his companions uh, to migrate to Abyssinia. And remember guys, Allah doesn't place a burden on any of us that's too great to bear. Rukiah was the second oldest of his daughters, but she was also the most weakest too. And what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, she was a strong woman, but she didn't have the resilience that Fatima had. And she didn't have the resilience that Zainab and, and Um Katum had. She was, she was more sensitive than they were. She was a little bit more sensitive which is another reason why the prophet married her to Uthman, because he knew that the people respected Uthman. Everybody loved Uthman. So she wouldn't receive much persecution being married to him. Okay, so when Allah sent down the command to migrate, that's when it was suggested that she be amongst the first to go because the prophet wanted to protect her because she was more sensitive than the other girls were of his. And you know, some of us are like that. This is why we have to be careful posting up pictures of dead people on your Facebook page. I don't know why you guys do that when the prophet Muhammad said that we should have dignity. Don't show people at their worst. But I don't know why you Muslims are doing that. But a lot of people can't stand to see that. Some people can look at death and it doesn't bother them. But other people have we are weaker than that. Well, that's how Rukiah was. All that persecution that the Muslims were going through, the abuse, she couldn't handle it like her other sisters did. So that's why uh, it was suggested to Uthman that he take her, even though Uthman wanted to stay, to be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mecca, the prophet told him, no, take my daughter away. Look for, out for her. She's more sensitive of my children, okay? 
And after he uh, uh, went to Uthman first and suggested that he take uh, Rukiah, the prophet then announced to the other Muslims, he said, if only you would go to Abyssinia, there's a king there who does not allow for anyone to be mistreated in his presence or in his land. And if only you all would go there until Allah provides a way out of this for us. So Uthman took the prophet's suggestion, even though he wanted to stay, and, and Rukiah uh, wanted to stay too because she loved her father, and, and this was her home, but she knew it was best for her. You know, they were sad at having to leave their families and friends behind. But Rukiah said to him, she said, Allah is indeed with us. And Allah is indeed with, the, with those who we are leaving behind here at the Kaaba. So she and Uthman were amongst that group uh, of, of immigrants who left Mecca and they went towards Jeddah's seacoast. And it was from the seacoast of Jeddah that they boarded a ship and sailed towards Abyssinia. And they disembarked at the shore and traveled towards the inland until they arrived at the palace of the King Negus. And they told him of their migration to his land and told him that they were seeking a uh, refugee status. And just so you guys know, the distance between Mecca and, and Ethiopia is not close. That's a long journey. Even today, it's a long journey. And because of how long the journey is, just so you guys know, some of the immigrants uh, uh, died and some of the people became sick because that was a long, long uh, 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 ship uh, sail. And back home in Mecca, the Quraysh, when they learned that some of the Meccans had left, they sent the delegation after them to try to bring them back. And that delegation was led by Amir ibn al-As and, and, and ibn Abu Rabia. Amir was a close friend of the Negus and used to visit him and send him gifts. And that's where I'm gonna stop in the story today because it gets kind of messed up. Like I said, Rukiah was the weaker of the girls uh, she arrived, they made it to Abyssinia. She got a little sick, okay? She became a little sick too. She was among some of those, uh, the people that became sick because uh, she was a little, you know, she was more sensitive and weaker than the others. But she was happy, happy because she was with the man of her life, Uthman. He was a good husband and they were the perfect couple and he showered her with nothing but love. And he showered her with all the, the riches that she wanted. She had beautiful clothing, you know, he would buy her jewelry and buy her clothing and whatever toiletries that she liked. He used to shower her with his love, you know, because he was a multi-millionaire and can do that. So I'm gonna stop right here today for her story. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to pick it up and continue on. I'm going to continue on with the second part. What happened? How did she and Uthman live in Abyssinia? How did she adapt to that climate and those circumstances? So, Supanakala Huma wa Bihamdika, Ashadu on Laila, Haila Anta, Stak Feruka wa Tuboy Lake. Are there any questions? Any questions or comments about what we discussed today about Rukaya? You know, any any questions? 